Панове, ми розпочинаємо сьогодні наш насичений робочий день в Українському кризовому центрі і розпочинаємо з важливої цікавої тематики – реформування податкової системи України. На цю тему говориться дуже багато, тому що це одна сфера, яка нагально потребує реформування, долучаються до неї експерти на багатьох рівнях і сьогодні ми почуємо погляд експертів від від ініціативи «Реанімаційний пакет реформ». Ми будемо говорити з Ільєю Несходовським, кандидатом економічних наук, експертом ініціативи «Реанімаційний пакет реформ» групи «Податкова реформа», з Віктором Масерчуком, аналітиком «Опен Дайлек», з Євгеном Лійником, Міністерство економічного розвитку та торгівлі України і з Олегом Гетманом, економістом та експертом реанімаційного пакету реформ. Колеги поділяться з вами своїми поглядами, напрацюваннями на те, як можна реанімувати і реформувати податкову систему України. Я запрошую до слова пана Ілюна Сходовського. Добрий день. Я вам всім хочу подякувати, що ви тут зібралися. І... З чого я хочу почати? Я хочу почати з того, що є податками, тобто як вони впливають. Найголовніше наше завдання – це стан впливу податків на економічну систему. Тому першим ділом я хочу охарактеризувати сучасний стан економіки. Сучасний стан економіки знаходиться в дуже складному стані. Це пов'язано з тим, що попередня влада вела дуже недбало і економічну, і податкову політику, а на сьогоднішній день на це наклалась також політична і військова ситуація на Сході країні, яка дуже суттєво впливає на наш економічний стан, на розвиток економіку. До чого це призвело і що у нас може бути у майбутньому? По-перше, я хочу сказати, що у нас прогнози на 2014 рік наших міжнародних інституцій, які оцінюють стан економіки, вони дуже невтішні. Зокрема, Світовий банк, Міжнародний валютний фонд, Європейський банк реконструкції та розвитку, їхні прогнози щодо падіння економіки в цьому році, вони складають від 3 до 7%. В останніх прогнозах вони навіть відмовилися прогнозувати внаслідок тої економічної, внаслідок тої політично-військової ситуації в країні, вони відмовилися прогнозувати розвиток, майбутній розвиток економіки, тобто просто не публікують дані. Щодо податкової системи, хочу ще сказати наступно. Тривалий час податкова система характеризовувалася міжнародними експертами як одна із найгірших в світі. Дуже тривалий час наша податкова система за оцінкою міжнародного світового рейтингу Doing Business знаходилася на передостанньому місці. І тільки от трохи посунулося вгору внаслідок певних інноваційних введень, зокрема електронної звітності, але це не спростило, суттєво не спростило введення бізнесу в Україні. І це безпосередньо вплинуло на економіку. У той час, коли наші сусіди зростали, економіка України, вона тільки зараз або, скажімо так, в минулому році, вийшла на показники 1991 року. Чому це сталося? Які основні причини цього ми бачимо, тобто наша група? Основні причини полягає в тому, що попередня влада систематично створювала глобальну систему податкових ям і податкових майданчиків, через які відмивалися сотні мільярдів гривень, за оцінкою Міністерства доходів і зборів. Недоотримання бюджету внаслідок функціонування податкових ям за найскромнішими оцінками сягає 80 мільярдів. Ці гроші не йшли в бюджет, ці гроші йшли відповідно тим людям, які організовували ці податкові ями. Зараз Після того, після Майдана, ці податкові ями тимчасово скоротили свою діяльність, але ми знову спостерігаємо, вони продовжують працювати. Вони продовжують працювати і, можливо, нарощують свої обсяги у порівнянні з тим, що вони скоротили після Майдану. Чи бореться з цим влада? Я хочу сказати відносно такого зараз прийняття законопроекту про податковий компроміс. А бізнес за стерогою відноситься до цих ініціатив. Чому? Тому що по факту вони спрямовані на амністію не бізнеса, 
а на амністію тих людей, які організували ці податкові схеми. І навіть в бізнесі зараз називають це як списки Курченка. Списки Курченка, тобто це ті, які організовували і приймали участь в цих ямах. Тому податковий компроміс тут треба ще дивитися і робити його таким, щоб не дати злочинцям усунутися від відповідальності. Наша група реанімаційного пакету реформ, вона розробила пропозиції, які, як ми вважаємо, не тільки покращать умови бізнесу в Україні, але і суттєво зменшать можливості існування податкових схем. Загальна характеристика наших пропозицій є наступна. Перше, дайте бізнесу дихати вільно. За весь цей час я не згадую той час, коли бізнес міг вільно розвиватися. Завжди були е, суттєвий фіскальний тиск, е, зростання навантаження на, е, фіскального навантаження на підприємств, податкові перевірки, своєвільне трактування податкового законодавства, яке призводило до того, щоб е, підприємці, замість того, щоб займатися бізнесом, вони воювали з податковими. Наша пропозиція спрямована на те, е, щоб скоротити це, щоб зменшити це. В чому воно полягає? Зокрема, одна з наших пропозицій – це виведення витрат з підконтролю податкової. Ми хочемо запропонувати систему, коли не податково вирішує, чи потрібно мені зробити ці витрати, чи ні, а сам бізнес. Сам бізнес вирішує, що йому треба робити для того, щоб розвиватися. Друга – це відносно ПДВ. Ми хочемо ПДВ зробити простим, некорупційним, щоб він відшкодовувався і щоб мінімальне було втручання податкової до розрахунку сплати, розрахунку між платниками ПДВ. А податковий контроль повинен був спрямовано тільки на те, щоб максимально усунути вплив тільки тих злочинних схем, well, які реально існують. Тобто податкова повинна боротися зі злочинцями, а не з підприємцями. Друга – це наша пропозиція. По факту, за результатами впровадження податковий облік стає непотрібним. Тривалий час замість того, щоб займатися тим, щоб обліковувати ресурс і ефективно ним управляти для того, щоб отримувати прибуток, бізнес займався тим, що він складав податкову звітність. Я знаю багато підприємців, які не вели взагалі did not have accounting. They just had uh, tax uh, documents, so they were uh, working on that, uh, just uh, because they wanted to, uh, to report uh, to, to tax inspection. That had that influence on uh, business in Ukraine. That's why our proposal solves that problem. We don't cancel, we don't cancel. We did to oblige to show Or accounting. Accounting should be for benefit, for good work of an enterprise for growth for economic growth and second uh, the third uh, stop stop corruption the biggest problem of tax uh, in, uh, tax system is uh, uh, tax schemes our proposals allow to reduce all the be uh, all the basis uh, for that the be the most uh, corruptional component is uh, paying uh, back uh, VAT our proposals make it automatic so when there is um, a, um, an application in 10 days it should be uh, Im implemented uh, we create the system when the state is not afraid uh, of uh, paying back VAT to enterprise because that money will be in the system that will be it will be paid it will pay and uh, there is no reason for not to, uh, for not paying back uh, VAT the, one more uh, step uh, Reduction of uh, VAT uh, tax uh, on uh, income and uh, social uh, fee. Fis we, have, we approach it as socially and uh, fiscally responsible. It's not just a technical re re reduction. These are technical collisions. And they show that as a result of our proposals, budget will get the same sum it gets now. How does it happen? In the cost of uh, taxes, tax schemes, if our proposals are taken into uh, consideration, they will be brought to minimum. The sums I mentioned at the beginning, they will not go to organizers of uh, tax, uh, tax uh, schemes and havens. They will go to the budget. And because of that, uh, the, and uh, it will have the same, uh, uh, the same sum. So here's uh, the 
here's the following. There should be a um, VAT, there should be income tax and uh, uh, social tax. Why? Because on one hand, uh, these are budget built-in uh, taxes, uh, they are the biggest. On the other hand, uh, they are the most uh, corruptional. And by fact, uh, they impede business. So the first step is uh, to reduce a burden on on a salary fund. It is the highest in the world. In, in Ukraine, it's uh, the highest in the world. In, East, in Europe, we are the first. In Europe, we are um, uh, among the first uh, five, and there is uh, the burden on a salary fund. It should be changed because of that because uh, that encourages uh, uh, salaries uh, to be given in envelopes and uh, to go around uh, to be unofficial. So we reduce that uh, by, by two times, and uh, from uh, 38 to 18 percent. Uh, the second step is uh, when we analyze the econo economy, we see that uh, economy requires investment resources for its growth. That's why we suggest to change the approach uh, to taxation of uh, income to tax only divided income. By fact, that is uh, in order to be income or dividends. Not in the way we have now, how they, or how they use this uh, term. When you divide income, when you take it out of the enterprise, uh, you, you pay the tax. In case that income you receive, uh, that profit, you keep it. And uh, you, if you put it into, uh, if you invest it, uh, then you will not uh, pay that uh, tax. That will be an, an internal resource of Ukraine which is uh, we, we have uh, about 100 uh, billion of revenue of it. And uh, there is a, uh, there's a compensator here because um, we are fiscally uh, responsible. And I will speak about this uh, tax. Uh, the compensator is which is a tax on main that will allow to invest uh, main assets, so that will uh, how? If I have assets that are not uh, that are not profitable for me, I will try to get rid of them. If I have uh, assets uh, which are old, and uh, especially yeah, that require a more efficient approach, and uh, I will try to find new ones, and uh, that will improve investment. Uh, uh, turn uh, uh, turnability of uh, capital in Ukraine, and uh, the third, uh, the most uh, difficult uh, tax, that is a tax uh, on uh, value added tax. That that is the most uh, corrupted, but it is corrupted all not because not by its nature, but it was done. It was made in Ukraine like that. Any tax uh, can be uh, corruptional. Uh, if our proposals are taken into consideration uh, through uh, VAT, they will ca cancel a uh, tax declaration. It will be chill only for one uh, uh, an annual, and there will be a, a tool of a personal return uh, of money from a VAT uh, accounts to the main account of enterprise guarantee. There is a, a tool of, of guaranteed uh, payback uh, to all, but not uh, to, uh, to privileged uh, groups. And uh, in order to motivate the business, we uh, suggest uh, to reduce uh, VAT uh, down to 17% and uh, to produce uh, to 7%, which enlarge money and of uh, enterprise and will improve the investment uh, opportunities. In such a way, our proposals make uh, tax, uh, tax holes and other uh, schemes, uh, tax schemes are unnecessary. So the business will work under such conditions when taxes are not, uh, are not a burden. And uh, we have consultations. We speak to business, and uh, we spoke at a business forum in Kharkiv. And the main uh, question was when, when will these changes come to uh, to our economy? Because the business business cannot exist under such conditions. And uh, fiscal uh, service and the minister of finances. They work now on finding, finding where else to, to get money from a business, from people, in order to fill the budget. But uh, we cannot, uh, but uh, reduce the budget if the uh, incomes of uh, people of business go down. The initiatives which uh, we are concerned with is. Uh, uh, the VAT accounts in the format that the fiscal service suggests instead of helping the business, uh, they will not uh, 
eradicate the criminal schemes uh, uh, that exist in Ukraine. I also would like to thank the Minister Sheremeta who supported our proposals and who understands that the economy is the priority. It requires new approaches, new vision, new attitude. Uh, to pull money from the economy all the time is impossible. The country is rich only when the citizens are rich. We also hope that our proposals will be supported by the Prime Minister Yenitsyuk, Yatsenyuk and the President uh, Poroshenko, who at uh, the meeting with the public uh, mentioned the war is not the uh, uh, reason not to implement reforms, uh, and uh, it's great that he appointed such a person as Dmitry Shimkiv, who's very progressive, who's responsible for the reforms, and the results of our cooperation with this team will be able to make our tax system simple, understandable, such that will promote business. Now I would like to give the floor to the person from the Ministry of Economic Development and Trade, who is the development of our expert group who participated actively in development, who suggested very serious proposals, who supported us all the time, and that is why we included our proposals into the concept. Evgeny Alinikov, you're welcome. Good afternoon. Basically, uh, Ilya has described all these changes that are to take place in the tax uh, sector in detail, which are the ideas which are included into the concept, which will be discussed uh, by our colleagues from other institutions. Uh, what I would like to add first, the principles which are included into the concept. These are the principles of mutual responsibility. We do not have any other opportunity or any other possibility to uh, play uh, such a game that on the one hand we have uh, the civil servants who say we need to think about the needs of the state. On the other hand, we have liberals who say the first thing is business, everything else is secondary. But in fact, we have to, first of all, learn how to trust each other. For that, we need such rules of game that such uh, trust is based not just on talks, but on the rules which make it impossible to violate these mutual commitments. I remembered about our proposals uh, on reforming the VAT tax. That is the key tax. Uh, no one, uh, uh, no other tax uh, gives more to the budget than this tax. Secondly, this is the only tax that allows uh, not just to reduce uh, uh, the um, payment of it, but also it allows to steal money from the budget. Just the fact of avoiding paying taxes does not create too big risks for the economy because the person who doesn't pay taxes still uh, conducts some economic activity, earns this money, did not give everything uh, according to the law, but the schemes which are directed towards stealing money, that's different. That's the shadow economy which could be legalized. The crime cannot be legalized. Besides that, in the result of such stealing, the pressure on legal taxpayers is increased. If we do not overcome the scheme, then there is a very simple uh, decision uh, to take money needed from the ones uh, who pay. And we create uh, non-competitive conditions for other taxpayers. We just destroy them. The system that is suggested establishes mutually, mutual rules of game, transparent rules of game. The business cannot form efficient uh, tax credit, and the state cannot say that they uh, cannot reimburse uh, the um, VAT because they are not sure in the origin of the credit. So we will have very clear transparent rules. This will allow us to increase uh, 
uh, the reserve which we need to implement some other reforms. I want you to understand it clearly. The situation for implementing reforms is very unfavorable. If our economy were working and the situation were at the level of the last year, any experiments that could lead to temporary decrease of incomes could have been uh, compensated. But now we basically do not have such a reserve in the situation. The situation in the country, the situation is very tense and the not successful experiment could lead to social outburst, and we've seen that. And that is why the reforms which are suggested now, they will be implemented. They are based uh, on understanding that we uh, cannot afford uh, having the experiments that would fail. Another important issue is the changes which are prepared today. We have come to the limit when the development of basic reforms uh, comes to the point of practical implementation. There are some proposals as to amendments to tax legislation. In the nearest future, we will make public the first quite big law on principal amendments in regulatory environment. But what I would like to say about the approach to reforms, even if we are using some uh, uh, terms we're used to, we now mean something def different. Uh, when we talk about the regulation, we do not uh, mean just removing some permits. Unfortunately, we were very fond of that, and when we were formally moving up in ratings, we were not improving the business environment. Today, by deregulation, we mean creating absolutely new regulatory system and absolutely different regulatory principles. Until now, we have the principle of permit in our system. To do something, this is to be allowed. We want to change it to uh, the principle of forbidding. Everything is allowed, but some things could be forbidden if there are some serious grounds to that. And such, uh, and this should be based on the decision of independent competent authority. I would like to thank the reanimation package of reforms for their understanding and for the fact that we always have a very professional discussion with them. It's very difficult to work when a person comes who wants just to be cheered up by the uh, public, the person who doesn't want to think uh, about what will reforms lead to, because every reform is usually directed towards uh, some decision. And uh, some simple but wrong decisions very often have uh, very difficult consequences working with the uh, this group uh, is different. Uh, people, they understand the reforms is not just distortion of the system, but building the system based on mutual responsibility. And we will have to live with that. Thank you. Thank you. Now I would like to invite expert, uh, our manager of our tax group, Oleg Getman. Uh, in the beginning, I wanted to say a couple of uh, words about uh, creating uh, this uh, reanimation uh, reform package and its work after the events in February. The civic organizations decided that they should control the authorities and they organized more than 15, more than 15 such organizations organized such association, which is called reanimation reform package. That includes the Chesna Ruh, Center of Counteracting Corruption, and the Center UA, and many, many other organizations whose objective is to control, to supervise the authorities. We have about 16 different groups on different directions, legal reform, law enforcement reform, 
anti-corruption, and many, many others, including economy. Uh, during the first months of our web work, we managed to achieve quite serious successes. In April, uh, in March, April, there were about six uh, laws passed, 2207 on opening tender procedures, uh, 0946 on what is called control uh, over the civil servants. Uh, well, the first months were quite successful. In the last two or three months, we see quite a serious uh, decrease of activity because of different reasons. Our activists are very active, but uh, in the authorities, uh, well, the authorities are not interested in laws which would be controlling and supervising them. The group of economy was organized in March, and we invited experts from Case Center, Open Dialogue, World Bank. We got together the economists from Ukraine who care about uh, the country. We worked for three months over the concept of that reform. It was approved uh, also by um, independent experts uh, and uh, we then started actively uh, cooperating with the Ministry of Economic Development. Uh, this cooperation is very fruitful. And then the result, about a week ago, we uh, uh, developed, we finalized this concept, which is now um, at the Prime Minister's uh, office. And we request him not to delay this process in the nearest future to, future to consider these proposals and to make a decision. Last week, there was uh, a statement from the Prime Minister that uh, the reanimation has, uh, is uh, uh, over and uh, we have to start restoring, but basically the facts are different. We have plenty of unemployment and that means that uh, nothing has been done for the economy. We are actively cooperating with the platform reform MPs. Uh, these are 26 MPs who actively support the reforms and with them, with the, in the cooperation with Ministry of Economic Development, we hope that these reforms will be passed in the nearest future. A few words about uh, tax holes. In the end of February, we sent uh, the letters that all tax platforms stopped or tax sites stopped uh, operating. A few months, the business was at a loss. There were some partisans who were increasing the activity with the rate 6 7%. And a few weeks ago, the process reached a certain stage and the partisans somehow got united. They went up to a higher level and now they're forming the old system of all the tax sites or tax platforms in a month in the two, it will be very difficult to do anything with that. I would like to give the floor to Mazarchuk Victor, Open Dialogue Foundation, our colleague, and he will talk about our cooperation with international organizations. Good morning, colleagues. Maybe I will not speak about it in Texas, but I will speak about money, about public money and uh, money provided by, by international financial operations in the form of uh, grants and credits. A group of public uh, public finances uh, of the package we are focused on uh, two main two main directions. The first one, a direction about um, accounting chamber. We speak. Uh, we are working on a change in the legislation. We develop the law on the accounting chamber because the, law, the old law is uh, from 1996 and it's morally old. That's a, a big block of work Ukraine has to do at the request of our European colleagues because this norm is is in the memorandum signed by Ukraine with EU. When we received a loan of one billion billion, that's a part of our work. The other part is uh, we have a special subgroup uh, which is responsible for efficient 
monitoring of money provided to Ukraine. And uh, during the last months, starting in uh, starting in January, everybody speaks uh, says that Ukraine will be filled with uh, money. Ukraine will uh, receive lots of money, 17 billion dollars from uh, IMF, uh, 11 billion euro from EU, a billion of dollars uh, guarantees uh, of the years and if you calculate it's about uh, 30 billion 30 30 billion dollars super my question is why is that money uh, it's a rhetorical question everybody says yes we have them but nobody knows where they are nobody sees them everybody says ukraine got uh, three three billion from imf yes we saw the gold reserve we have uh, statistics. Ukraine received a billion euro, a billion seven hundred fifty euro from the World Bank. Where is that money? In the budget. How is it used, colleagues? Somehow nobody asks those questions. The main task on this stage of, in our sub subgroup is to collect information maximum information about all present projects, investment projects for which Ukraine receives receives money from um, international bank organizations, from um, EBRD, from European Investment Bank, and um, there are not many of them. But mo mo mostly there are four organizations uh, that give loans to Ukraine. I will I left uh, some more information in the front desk, on the front desk, and that is a, one part. Such, uh, we have uh, not many of such projects, but uh, it's already existing for a uh, for, uh, for, uh, point, uh, point uh, uh, two uh, billion euro. How that money is uh, distributed? The main task is uh, to create a crit critical, critical mass of people which will ask uh, in inconvenient uh, questions to the government. Do you know that, for example, a billion four hundred million euro of, of loans for state guarantees are uh, given to the structures related uh, to Ministry of uh, Coal and Energy? And there are two uh, projects uh, to build, uh, to build uh, electrical lines uh, for uh, 750 million euro. One is uh, 350 and then lines, um, the consulting services and, uh, and other, uh, it's 42 billion, million euro, it's about, it's about uh, 500 million uh, rinia. And we will have to pay that money back. I don't say that they are not used. I don't say that they are used inefficiently. Those uh, projects are in, uh, highly intellectual and they require require professionals, and that's it's very expensive. But show me how that money will be spent. One big moment. The other. The other component is the the most interesting is probably that a money. Do, uh, given uh, to Ukraine as grants, free, free assistance. Ukraine during the last uh, 20 years uh, received about uh, seven billion dollars of, of grants, different grants. Now in Ukraine we have 321 project of technical assistance for two uh, for two uh, point five billion. Uh, Euro. It's $950 uh, per, uh, per person. Where's that money? Big question. I'll tell you. $1.6 billion money given to Ukraine for the construction. They are co related to construction of, the, of that um, protection uh, shell uh, for Chernobyl. But how it is used? Who are the main uh, subcontractors? It would be interesting to look, especially for journalists, it would be interesting to look. Ask, ask, ask the government uh, for, uh, for what are we paying money? This is 2.5 billion hryvnia. 
It's 13% 13, 13 from the budget, from this budget we have for this year. So it's almost like a, uh, it's a VAT. Forty, Forty-three uh, state agencies receive uh, money. How? What are the results? Uh, what are the goals uh, for each uh, project? Colleagues, journalists, ask the government. Ha help us uh, to ask inconvenient questions uh, to the government. And in the end, I wanted, I wanted to, I want to say that the Minister of Economy uh, made a very good thing, because on their website uh, they put uh, a list, uh, a database. Uh, on all the projects of international uh, technical assistance and uh, of all uh, grants projects. And uh, that is a decision which was uh, done like uh, like in Nigeria, the same developer. And uh, I, when I looked at it, and, uh, when I... And they have just a general information, beautiful picture, and uh, you can make uh, different selections, uh, charts, uh, but there is no uh, key key thing. Who is the who is the receiver of uh, those uh, funds? What are the final uh, results of those uh, projects? So, because of the, of everything I told you, our organization, uh, well, together with the reanimation uh, package of reforms and uh, with uh, some other partners, uh, we will we will have an online platform. It will be partially. And we'll use uh, the database uh, from the Ministry of Economy, but we'll clean it because uh, now in the, in the database of the Ministry of Economy, you can observe, you can see that uh, there are not, they don't have all the projects. If you can see that, you can notice that in five minutes. The main idea of the database is that to, to show the final users finding goals uh, for every uh, project and to monitor eff effectiveness to monitor their performance. I will finish because uh, uh, we need to have some time for questions. Thank you. I would like to say this is uh, about we are practical and for every for every session we prepare a package of uh, draft laws uh, to be passed, a reanimation package. And uh, one of the examples is we would like the parliament to pass And we outlined all the issues. We cannot say everything in a short uh, press conference. We have a website which is uh, which is called platform dash a new a, and you can go to that uh, website and uh, you will see uh, all there. Thank you. Now your questions. Thank you very much. It was very interesting to uh, listen to you. You spoke. It's understandable. You uh, you work with uh, European experts and European politicians. Uh, what uh, what do they wish in addition to tax uh, reform? Which sectors uh, do they mention uh, that require uh, reforms? Three the most important uh, reforms uh, or sectors of economy, as I understand. The first thing as. Far as we see, the biggest problem is uh, corruption everywhere. As long as we have corruption on any level, on the highest level, um, middle level, on the lower ministries and enterprises and uh, tax inspections, that will impede the development of Ukraine. That's why the main task is to stop corruption schemes, to destroy them. The second direction we see they would like uh, to join us. They would like uh, to to make our society open. They want uh, you, you, Ukraine to have democratic principles. Yeah, so that's why the second task is is that to have uh, open, open, free press and uh, open access to, uh, to information for people and for civil society to participate in those fields and influence on all these uh, fields. It should be not a closed club. And the second task, yeah, nobody, that is, we should have discussions. 
on democracy, democ democratic principles, and open society. That's what uh, what, uh, what they to are talking about. And uh, the third one is economy. I will not speak about uh, the military operation because everybody is talking about that. We come. The third uh, direction is they w want economy to start working because they understand it's very important. And maybe because we meet the, with them on those issues. Thank you. More questions? Correspondent. Over. In your opinion, the package of anti-crisis uh, economic uh, measures provided by by professionals uh, of the president uh, at the meeting with uh, uh, with the public, as, as you mean that meeting which had and the package of, of reforms. You were at the meeting, and uh, I w I had had to represent a tax, but we have uh, not enough of time. I learned that those materials. I have a practical question to push uh, economic. Uh, economy of Ukraine from crisis to pull it out and uh, to make it move forward. That what should be in the package, first of all, what is the priority? You speak about the economy, yes. The first step if to take economy of the state, we have to understand if the economy is shrinking, if income of people is falling and business profits reduce, then the same happens to the budget. And they have to sit and think, but not in the cost of people, but in the cost, I like the phrase of the president who told that we have 1,000 of thousands of public servants who do nothing and we spend a lot of money for them. If that is one of the priority of the president, I will support him. We have to reduce the number of public servants. We have to make them work. When that uh, mechanism uh, functions that will have influence on our economy in addition to uh, in addition to some other steps which allow uh, business to develop systematically and one more moment one more point minister of economy of German government is he told that you do very important constitutional Constituents, we should reduce uh, redistribution to the budget of uh, internal gross uh, by product, domestic uh, gross by product, and uh, to constitutional uh, limit and uh, taxes. We have to do that. The state, the state must meet the requirements of people. We don't have the right to do, to to divide more, to have more than uh, or this uh, this sum. I will, the state should live uh, according should. The bi for the money business can pay, not uh, on the maximum. And one more question, if possible. You believe, first of all, this should be the revenue part of the budget and revenue part of the economy, which are priorities. The reduction of uh, expenditure part, like we should reduce the costs for civil service, which is uh, uh, pulling the economy down. The optimization should go along uh, Polish uh, model or European. If you want to reduce costs, uh, do reduce. Uh, the whole government, just seven ministers, and everything's fine there. I believe, again, it's not uh, revenues but uh, expenditures. Uh, if this happens, then it will be easier for the business because now they're trying to fill in the budget with any measures. Business doesn't like that, especially in the economic situation that we have, union agency. Quite recently, there has been a decision made that the Ministry of uh, uh, Revenues is becoming a fiscal service. Uh, do you believe that the fiscal service will not have any legislative uh, initiative anymore? And what uh, are the first decisions that the market is expecting? The changes are taking place. 
their uh, powers also uh, went down, and that's correct. They took their they they, they have their place. The, this cannot be just the, 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 this should be the Ministry of Finance that should be subordinate to them. Talking about the change of their work, it's difficult for me to assess. Talking about same people being there, let's look at the results. They in difficult situation. Uh, what is required from them is to fill in the budget. Let's look at how they are planning to resolve this task, either through fiscal pressure or maybe in cooperation with the business. The tax compromise that was suggested is not the way out of the situation. It's not good for business. No. Uh, you mentioned the opposition. Can you specifically name institutions and names? I will not name the. I will not give you the names because our proposals were to send to the Ministry of uh, Revenues and uh, Fees, the Ministry of Finance, and the Ministry of Social Policy. All the ministries said everything's fine. In our case, don't touch it, don't touch taxes, the situation is normal there. Don't touch finance, the situation is normal. Don't reduce. For example, our proposals are grounded. Sometimes they did not, I believe, even looked at our indicators. indicators. They did not really understand our proposals. And these two main bodies, the Ministry of Social Policy is not so much, they said just no, but in those two there is a big opposition. They do not want to change so that it's done in favor of the entrepreneurs. They have one task, to fill in the budget, but they are not interested. And that's wrong approach. They do not understand that they are killing the economy. But who's listening to you? You are involved in development and drafting of many regulations. Which ones of them uh, have been uh, accepted by the executive authorities and others? We have two, strategic group and tactical group. The regulation, there are many draft laws on the regulation that were passed the experts of our group now uh, is, for example, Oksana Prodan, the MP. And uh, the whole package of documents was approved. I'm sorry, I don't have it. We have the package economic reform, the draft law directed towards deregulation. There are many draft laws directed to deregulation, and some of them uh, have been approved in the first reading, others are submitted, they, they are registered and they will be submitted for uh, voting. Who's helping us? We have quite good cooperation with the Ministry of Economy, Economic Development and Trade, and uh, Dmitry Shimkiv uh, was in our office yesterday and we discussed the issue of the regulation of business. We had a very professional uh, answer. That's not a civil servant. That's a person who will be implementing reforms. Very specific questions, specific comments. Uh, he, that's not just a discussion. There were specific actions made. And I liked yesterday's meeting. If it continues this way, then the reforms will be implemented in our country. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you for the work you are doing. And hopefully we'll have uh, news from you about passing the draft laws. You will see one on uh, canceling the tax uh, bills of lading. Uh, what is suggested could be uh, made effective from the 1st of January. Thank you, thank the experts.